This time on IFAF. Idaho Falls and Flowers. Sunflowers. It's got a new word now okay, because everything right. does because skibbity toilet. If it's a zombie apocalypse, I know I'm out. This one, it's got me teetering. The good news is everybody is watching your package bounce over that. <laughs> Potatoes are not the most boring thing. Potatoes are fascinating. IFAF. Idaho Falls Local. Independent. Alternative Media with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. Hey, buddy. Hit that like button and subscribe and let YouTube know you're into Idaho Falls infotainment, opinion, and bad jokes. There's a <laughs> link right down here in the post on tonight's episode. What season is it? It's three different seasons, Mike. Not four seasons? What just, a bunch of crap. Just three right now this time of year. <laughs> Ooh, we have new salacious Mormon sex line. What? Ooh. Uh, also, a swoob hack for your swoobs. An exciting new global health emergency has been rebranded. <laughs> Sunflowers. Sweet love and corn. And how to spot a fake post before you share it on the fake book. Let's address this t-shirt. All right. So this is, <laughs> this is, can you identify the brands left to right on this shirt? I can. I can. Mm, the second one, I think I know. Okay. It's like, I never remember how to pronounce it. It's like Fido, Filo, Fi. Fila. Fila. That's I think. it. So it's the Disney I, the Fila F, the Amazon A, <laughs> and the Facebook F. Yeah. To spell I-F-A-F. Now I have been advised by an attorney to um, <laughs> say something like, this is a combination of other pieces of artwork that are put together to form a new transformative piece of artwork. I would agree. And therefore falls under fair use. Furthermore, I am making no money from this shirt. Yeah. And certainly not making money to the detriment of the companies featured <laughs> on this shirt. I would agree with that. Yeah, it's kind of like the Mona Lisa with the mustache, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. It's a whole new thing, technically. Earlier, you <laughs> said, it's like you drew Mickey Mouse on a t-shirt. Yeah, basically. Like, <laughs> Disney can't sue a kid if he decides to draw Mickey Mouse on a t-shirt. And that's exactly what I've done. This is a one-off shirt. <laughs> Unless he sells it, then. I, I, I'm doing it for the lulls. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing it for the shiggles. Yeah. <laughs> and there you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm doing it for the thumbnail. What this shirt made me think of, though, if you ever did want to make another one like it, is you could do one with the letters from different uh, streaming platforms. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's that would be kind of fun. That's a great idea. Yeah. Like another mashup of like yes. all of them. And yeah. that's what this design is called on my yeah. computer here is mashup. Yeah. I can see that. So we'll need a mashup, <laughs> too. We'll get a mashup, yeah. too, going. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking about using, you know, logos with famous Fs. I was thinking about using the Ford logo. Oh, There's, that'd be a good uh, one. Uh, sorry, the Ford F, uh -huh. the Ferrari F. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and th there's a few other ways we could have gone with this. Just curious, was that the most famous I that you could come up with? Yeah, yeah, yeah I can't the think Disney of a, I, right? You know, honestly, I can't think of a more famous I. Oh, wait, no, I can. Okay. But it's also technically a character. Okay. Do you know where I'm going? No. The Pixar lamp. Yes! Technically also oh. an I. Brilliant. Yeah. Let's, okay, the ideas are flowing. This is already a great <laughs> night. Cheers. Right? <laughs> mm -hmm. but yeah. Well, happy hobo season. <laughs> oh, I hate hobos so much, though. I'm so glad I haven't seen any yet. And that's why we're, we're sort of getting ahead of this. Mm -hmm. But it's going to happen. They're breeding outside your doors right now. Well, and I know some people have been seeing them already. So I, what I'm going to do is, because I don't care about the environment... <laughs> And I'm a cigar-smoking white cis man in a Republican state. <laughs> Kidding, mostly. But I am going to spray some Raid. Yeah, I don't know the last time you uh, smoked a cigar. Yeah. <laughs> not even at my son's wedding. Yeah, That's what usually were you when that would have happened, yeah. Yeah. I'm just not into cigars that much. Oh, really? I think they're kind of nice. Yeah. Kind of depends. You actually own a pipe. <laughs> I do. I've seen you smoke a pipe before. Just every now and then, just socially. It was a wild Friday <laughs> night two years ago, but oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 You know, that's funny because like anytime my insurance is like, do you smoke? No. Because like it's maybe <laughs> you, once a year, every other year. That's not smoking. Yeah. No, yeah. that doesn't count. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to do some raid around my door places, jams. Oh, yeah. What mm -hmm. do you call those? Door jams. And uh, 
you though you like the organic spray. You like the well because you have three pets. You have two cats and one dog. Right, including my, yeah, and my dog goes in and out of the house through that threshold. Right. So I don't want him to get it on his little paws and then lick him and then die because he's baby. I understand. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna do the raid, <laughs> and you're gonna do the organic. Yeah, all you know, natural. I don't know what I'm gonna do because honestly, we've I've had we so both, many bugs lately. Yeah, and it's been driving me nuts, especially earwigs, and it's so gross. Just the other day, I went to like get a paper towel. I pulled one earwig in my paper towels. I wanted to die. Yeah, that's yikes. <laughs> earwigs are the worst. I, oh, and they're I so gross. Those. Anyway, it's hobo season. It's also zucchini season. What's uh-huh. the joke? Why don't you leave your car windows rolled down? When you're parked in August in Idaho, because somebody might fill it with zucchini. (laughs) Okay. Isn't that the joke? I've heard it. And this whole thing makes me wonder, why y'all even grown them? Well, (laughs) but they're one of those things that grow easily and get out of control. Right. But also like, okay, I feel like, you know what? No, I don't have to feel anything. I have Mm -hmm. a concrete example. Mm -hmm. Just yesterday- I was at my grandma's house for a dinner, okay? She comes up to me, rests her rest her hand on my arm, looks at me and says, please tell me you're taking some of these zucchini. <laughs> Desperation in her eyes. Yeah. On the on the verge of tears. Well, we all, none of us <laughs> want food to go bad, really. Right, but it's also like, why are you growing this just to be that desperate to give it away? Now, you made <sighs> something incredible last oh, week. Yeah. And yeah. I think we should talk about it. So let's go back to Abracadabra is one of our favorite <laughs> breakfast places in Idaho Falls. I would mm-hmm. say it's the best breakfast place that I'm aware of. Yeah, it's it's pretty damn good. <laughs> Not to pick favorites, but I mean, you know, hands down, obviously. Judging strictly by uh, foot traffic into their establishment. I mean, they have a lot of folks in there for a good reason. And they're only open, I think, eight to two each day. So that's all they do is yeah. breakfast and lunch. Yeah. And brunch. And brunch. <laughs> Hilarious. Love Two it. peas in a pod right here. <laughs> but uh, one of the things they used to include, I think, with their Maverick chicken. Is mm-hmm. it Maverick or Malibu or Monterey? It's Maverick. Maverick chicken. Yeah. Okay. It used to be this zucchini bake. Well, I, at some point in the last, I don't know, five years, they decided to make it its own side. Oh, yeah? That you can order. Which, I mean, I know we've ordered the side. I guess I didn't realize that it ever came with something. I swear, at the very beginning, Abra's, <laughs> you put that zucchini bake with the Maverick chicken at the beginning. But I Well, either be way, that zucchini bake is kind of to die for. <laughs> but Carly made her own. She didn't even Google anything. Well, because I don't think there's, I don't think you can Google Abracadabra's right, Idaho Falls local. zucchini bake copycat recipe. I mean, we could try, I we guess. We could try. <laughs> we didn't even bother trying. I So... Here's the thing. I found that I kind of like to try to um, reverse engineer food. Uh-huh. It's like a fun little hobby for me. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, there's one I've been dying to try. The uh, dill pickle soup that we had in Montana. Yes. At Stacy's. Yes, at the place with the Rocky Mountain yeah. oysters. Uh, I've been dying to try to remake that, especially now a few months after I've had it. Because mm-hmm. then I think that's like a more fun challenge. You know, and I think we made the observation that it was more of a cream of pickle soup. Yeah, I yeah. wonder if we could just Google cream of pickle soup. It was it was kind of like a ranch soup with pickle chunks. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it was fantastic. The man was good. <laughs> but back to this zucchini bake. I thought you did extremely well. It was creamy. It was cheesy. It was pretty good. <laughs> the one thing that it was lacking, and I'm not going to complain about, was the one at Abra's has sort of a. I don't know, Cajun finish, a little spicy finish, yeah, just a little bit of heat. It's a Pisces. Behind it, yeah. Yeah. It's a Yeedle <laughs> Pisces. Yeah. Yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> but you just, you nailed it. So if you're looking for a zucchini recipe, I don't know. Do you know the recipe? Do you want to? Um, okay. Here's the thing. What was in it? I have found that any dish is delicious if you combine cream cheese and sour cream. Yeah. And then you put that on anything, it's going to be good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but basically it started with a block of cream cheese, some sour cream. I actually- Why does every recipe on TikTok include a (laughs) block of cream cheese? I swear. I don't. Well, and how is it that that happens to be the correct serving size for every dish? Yeah, maybe Philadelphia knows their shit, man. Well, and I'm just saying like with butter, it's always like a fourth a stick or a half a stick or a whole stick. 
it, but like it, it changes each time. Yeah. But with cream cheese, it's <laughs> always the whole damn block. <laughs> Anytime there's, I swear. Okay. You know? So, so you chopped up some zucchini and did you put some summer squash in that too? Some yellow squash? Yeah. So I did some zucchini and I did some su- summer squash, mostly because I like the green and yellow together. I think it looks nice. I think and being it, appealing to the eyes is important as well. And for some reason, I swore in my head that the one from Abra's had yellow. Like I thought that the stuff it, in it was yellow. It might. Oh, okay. I actually totally skipped a very important step. Okay. Entire stick of butter. Browned. Not just like That's throw it right. in. But yeah, I browned an entire stick of butter. Then I put in the zucchini. I let that simmer and, you know, get kind of nice. And then I did the cream cheese, a couple of scoops of sour cream. I eyeball all of my shit. There are no real, like the only reason I know it was an entire block of cream cheese is because there's no eyeball in that. You just took it out. You Carly, know? <laughs> Carly in the kitchen is a swirling dervish, I swear. <laughs> and then I know I had onion in it and a couple of different spices, definitely garlic. Um, and I just kind of, you know, spice to taste. Uh, I think there was probably also some basil in it and some oregano. I remember putting in oregano. Huh. And I think some turmeric or some dill. I don't remember. Some. I'm just saying, yeah. if you have a surplus of zucchini this year and you haven't mm-hmm. tried the Abra zucchini bake, maybe you could <laughs> go there, reverse engineer it, make your own copy of it because yeah. it that's delicious. It the was only so other, good. let's see, the only other use for zucchini that I can recall being just out of this world was little breaded zucchini slices fried up. Oh, those are good too. Like fried pickles? Yeah. Dip them in ranch when they're hot and oily and fresh? You know, you can get those from Carl's Jr. Can you? Any day of the year, yeah. Zucchini or at least, slices. Okay, at least at one point you could. Okay. But yeah, I've Wait, totally had probably them. Probably in good. August or September. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> now, that being said, you're forgetting another thing that you can do with zucchini that's just incredible. Okay. Zucchini bread? Have you never heard of oh, a yeah. zucchini bread? Zucchini bread can be yeah. done. Yeah. It it sounds, when I was a kid, it sounded like, no thanks. But yeah, right. it's really good. I mean, it's really just banana bread, but instead of bananas, you put in zucchini. Right. That's it. You know? I love it when it's nice and dense. Oh, yeah. And it gets that sort of thick outer crust. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. And then that stays in a bag for a couple of days. So it's sort of. Soft. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that it's with great. just like way too much butter. Yeah. You know, like where the butter leaves is its own little extra lip. That is one of the things. <laughs> banana bread and zucchini bread, you have to have a little uh, smear of butter. Yeah, you need a little lube on that before it goes in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. It's also back to school season. Let's see. Mm-hmm. District 91 and District 93, for the most part, starts next Monday, the 26th. Oh, yeah. Where's my notes? Yeah, I've got a couple of family members who work in the district who were uh, real bummed out. Yeah. (laughs) Having to go back to school. Well, and I saw, okay, I know Shelly goes, Shelly, I think, is already back. Yes. Because they they go back a week early for spud harvest. Yeah, they go. Or is it two weeks? Is it a week or two? I think it's two. Well, okay. I thought that they went back a week early and stayed a week late. Because uh, spud harvest is coming up in about, what, a, a month? Yeah. Yeah. And that's also when spud days is. Too. Okay. Yeah, so that would make sense. Third Saturday in September? Something like that. Shall I'm pretty we, okay. sure that's right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I know a guy who makes a ton of money during spud harvest. Like he Does he sell potatoes? He's get well no. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> I think Go he ahead. can get all he wants though. But um he actually schedules time off from his real job to go help, I think, a friend or a family member on the farm mm-hmm. and just makes a ton of money. Driving no. that tractor, combine, not a, what, a, mm-hmm. a reaper? I don't know what it's called. <laughs> that how, big old piece of equipment. <laughs> how do we get potatoes out of the ground? <laughs> and you call yourself an Idahoan? <laughs> right. I'm disgusted with myself. <laughs> <laughs> but man, well, and also, like, do you have to have a special license to drive that? I don't think so. Huh. I think kids can drive tractor on the farm when they're 14 or well, something. Well, a tractor, sure, but a whole potato harvester? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever it's called. Oh, I feel really dumb. 
Hey, speaking of which, side note. Yeah. I know you went to the Idaho Potato Museum just recently. I did. We featured that a couple of episodes ago, I mm-hmm. believe. They're looking for like a new executive director or something. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I don't really know how to harvest potatoes, but I think I'd be great for that because I love potatoes. I think you would. <laughs> I saw a little note at the bottom, and I'm doing this from memory, so forgive me if I got it wrong, Blackfoot Potato Museum. But uh, it was something like, pay depends on experience. Oh, interesting. And I thought... Yeah, right. And I know a lot of job postings say that. Right. But another way to say that is pay depends on your experience versus willingness to do this job versus our willingness to hire somebody who may or may not be qualified. Is that a sarcastic, sardonic <laughs> way to look at it? I think you know maybe a I mean? little. Yeah. yeah, maybe a little. But I, I do think that you're not totally wrong. I mean, really what they're getting at is we're on, like we're only going to invest into you what we think we'll get out of you. Right. But you know? if there was an, a huge budget for it, mm-hmm. they wouldn't put that line in. You know, They would just find the most qualified candidate and pay them what they're worth. Right. In fact, I, yeah. I kind of am interested in the kind of person who would want to become the executive director or whatever it is. I think it's – but it's basically the showrunner. Yeah. The person in charge of the Blackfoot Potato Museum. You're telling me you wouldn't want to? No, I would like to meet the person but I'm saying, yeah. who's so into that sort of thing. I'm just saying you wouldn't want that position because I would want that position. That sounds so fun. Maybe you should apply. I mean, okay, here's I, the thing. <laughs> he, what they really need is someone who can make the most boring thing interesting. Now, that being said, potatoes are not the most boring thing. Potatoes are fascinating. Well... But... If you can take the most boring thing and make that interesting, think of what you could do with potatoes. I mean... So I, said the guy who made the potato you, chip. <laughs> you got the job. <laughs> you got the job. If that was your audition, I think you nailed it. <laughs> Thank you. And you know what? I agree is the thing. Like, yeah. come on. At the, here's the thing. At the end of the day, I think that it's really just a limit of imagination. You know, if you... It, I think that if you are small-minded and if you don't think that there's enough creativity in the world, you're going to look at that job and be like, okay, that's me just shitting on you. Never mind. <laughs> what? No. I, you may be to potatoes what George Washington Carver was to peanuts. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Can you imagine if, if I made potato butter? <laughs> yeah. Is there such a thing as potato butter? If there isn't, there should be. <laughs> there should be. <laughs> I'm telling you, guys, Carl is your girl. She really is. I would have such a blast. So anyway, Shelly's <laughs> already back to school. D91 and 93 start next Monday and I think Tuesday, depending on if you're in middle school or high school or whatever. Right. I think sometimes right in high school, like, don't they have the freshmen come back to school one day and then everybody else the next day so that the freshmen can kind of get their bearings and learn the halls without getting oh. shoved into lockers by seniors or whatever. <laughs> Oh, that's actually a really good idea. I, I thought they did that. Maybe they still. I we, don't know. We drove by Hillcrest High School the other day, mm-hmm. and there's the uh, football season. Football already team started in in their brand new stadium, the Westmark Credit Union Stadium. I know. Uh, with that awesome is, marquee. Well, and it's so well lit. Oh yeah! My goodness, it's gorgeous, you like, guys. You could see that thing from space. Well done. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Comments and follow ups, Carl. This is the part of the show where I have to suck it up and just say I suck almost every episode. I don't think you suck. Everyone can be wrong sometimes. Some of us are wrong all the time. (laughs) (laughs) But it's uh, Holiday Inn was not 1947. It was 1942. Okay. I mean, that's pretty close. Yeah. Only a half a decade. Uh And and that's when Bing Crosby's White Christmas came out and was a hit on Halloween Day. The sequel... Isn't really a sequel. The 1954 film White Christmas is more of a reimagining, and they replace Fred Astaire with Danny Kaye. Okay. As I suspected last episode, but wasn't sure about. Mm -hmm. It was intended to be a remake, but they couldn't get Fred Astaire. Oh. And by the way, yeah, it was the first movie in Vista Vision. Vista Vision? Yeah. Okay. That's why it looks so colorful. Well, and that's the thing. They had all kinds of different visions. Back then, you know, yeah, wasn't there Panavision? Yeah, they were wor- they were experimenting a lot on like the best way to yes, the best way to get um, color on the screen, color and aspect ratio, and mm-hmm. all of that still. So yeah. Oh man, I'm trying to remember what the 
I think it's Technicolor that they use in Wizard of Oz. I think you're right. Yeah. Ross Park was only closed for like three days. Wild, huh? Yeah, they opened the day our show came out last week. They they and a pipe burst on what Wednesday, Thursday. I think it was a Thursday. Then they announced their close. So they were only closed for one weekend. Mm -hmm. That's the good news. The bad news is, the good news is they made it through their season. The bad news is the season just ended yesterday yeah. or <laughs> two days ago. Yeah. This, yeah. this past weekend. Which is kind of a bummer too. And doesn't make a ton of sense to me. Well, yeah. I mean, maybe it has to do with going back to school, but temps sure. are still in the 90s. Right. There's And then you get into September, Eastern mm -hmm. Idaho State Fair, Labor Day weekend, where it's either gusty and blustery <laughs> or like scorching hot. Right. So it's it's hit and miss for the fair sometimes. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, I sort of anticipate it still being pretty cozy around fair time. Right. You know, not that I've been reading a farmer's al almanac or anything like yeah. that. I'm just kind of guessing. Ooh. Oh, the Farmer's <laughs> Almanac is coming out at some point soon. I know. You love that thing so much. So we can take a look at the weather. <laughs> I bet they're counting down on their website right now. Thank you for reminding me You're of that. You're welcome. That's great. <laughs> also, we meant to do this last week as a follow-up, but uh, you went to the Snake River Arts Council Roaring Youth Jam. I did. And you got this cool little handout. I've, it's right over here. Yes, I'm actually really excited to show it. So I actually got a handout and a sticker. And we've got a shot of it, too, here, so you can check this out. <laughs> Here, I'll pass them over to you. But what it does is, no, you look, you look, you look at that. Okay. Uh, and here's the sticker. Isn't that, first of all, great artwork, guys. Yeah, great job. That is a really well-designed sticker. Nice work. The city of Idaho Falls, remember we said that they were going to do something cool with the water tower. I hope this ain't it. <laughs> but this handout is a really good start because they have right. a history of water towers. So we'll just put it up here, yeah. up here on the screen. So we've got the... 1888 Railroad Towers Windmill, the 1888 rail, Railroad Towers, and then they had the Tim Horton Tank. Now, I want to know if that's named after Timmy's up in Canada. Right. Like uh, the donuts and coffee shop and <laughs> poutine place in Canada. Don't they have poutine, I think? Pro I mean, who doesn't in Canada? Uh, ketchup chips. That's what they do there. Cadbury. That's all, <laughs> it's all at Tim Horton's, I'm sure. <laughs> And that's the one we've got right now, right? The Tim Horton tank? Yes. Yeah, Since that is when? our current one. Uh, 1937. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. about time. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's uh, just short of 90. Well, let's see here. We'll put the please 87. stand. 87. Okay, that's Which 87 years. I said. I'm not. I'm not sure, but I it think that's be. what I said. But yeah, 87 years ago. So it's about time. And yeah. stay tuned because coming up at the end of the episode, I've got a really unique shot of the water tower construction taken from a special place at a special time. I know that the orig or the current one, the Tim Horton Tower, wasn't red, white, and blue when it first was erected. Correct. It actually was painted on later uh, after a contest, right? In 1976 for the bicentennial of our right. country. Yes. Right. And I'm kind of hoping we do something similar for the new one. Because it looks so drab and gray compared to the, the I like red, your idea blue. from a few episodes back of having those Idaho Falls logo waves. I mean, I think that'd be nice. Wrap all the way around. Yeah, something like that. You least. heard it here first, folks. Yeah. As is often the case. <laughs> I have seen many a news organization report on something after we mention it on our silly, pithy Just saying, maybe little show. Maybe we have a little more foresight. Maybe we have a little less editing or something. I don't know what it is, but maybe we've just got that secret formula. Could be. New listener MB Beasley says, hey, Carly, you might be thinking of the slush puppy banana flavor. Okay. But where would one get that? I don't know. But he brings up a really good point, which is, um, so oh, we talked I about think it Slurpees, was slush puppy. slushies. Of course, there's squishies from The Simpsons yes, <laughs> that don't yes. exist unless you're at Universal Studios in California, uh -huh. Hollywood, uh, and Icy's. Uh -huh. But I forgot about Slush, Slush puppies. puppies, which is honestly, I think, the best name out of all of them. You think so? Yeah, it includes puppies. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Carly loves her critters. <laughs> well, and also, like, I, like I, isn't Slush Puppy already kind of a phrase? What are the shoes? Okay, the food is Hush Puppy. That's what it is. 
That's what I was thinking. Aren't, so yeah, aren't there so shoes? You, you could have hush them? puppies with your slush puppy. <laughs> yes, you genius. Could. You know, the more I think about it, the more I actually can picture the logo in my head. Like he's a white dog wearing a blue sweater and a little blue beanie with a white pom pom. Oh uh, yeah, and I think he's kind of droopy. Yeah, before and then and, and then he's got long floppy ears. He's Ices cute. came along and they had a big old bear. Yeah, the polar bear. Yeah, with you know, kind of along the same vein. Yeah. And I think the shoes were just called Hush Puppies. That sounds right. Yeah, I think so. Dane mentioned uh, something a couple of episodes ago. Sorry, buddy. We're just now getting to this. He suggested after we tried watermelon with mustard. Oh, yeah? And, and you know, 27-year-old beef jerky. He suggested that we try ice cream with olive oil and salt. Okay. I'm down. Okay. I, I mean, you know, on the show, we've had... Uh, Chef Boyardee with the marshmallow fluff. Uh-huh. We had watermelon and mustard. Let's go for it. Let's have we, ice we, cream with olive oil and salt. We did a whole mini sode on ABC Baker's uh, cookies. That's true. Girl Scout cookies versus Little Brownie Baker's cookies. Oh, those were so good. And, yeah. So we've yeah we've tried a ton of stuff. Mm-hmm. So we might as well try that. Thanks for that, Dane. We'll we'll give it a try. I'm down. Now I want to know how much olive oil though. Are we talking a drizzle or do you need to get it like kind of slushy and and what if we did like a <laughs> what if we did like a balsamic drizzle on there too you know that mia bella balsamic that i got uh-huh i want okay i once bought a bottle of balsamic vinegar from the internet and wasn't paying attention to the size and i thought 40 bucks for a bottle of balsamic that sounds reasonable go <laughs> and uh i wasn't thinking i was restocking my home right. and um and, and, well, and you expected and the, it to be like a big, like yeah. a big bottle. Yeah. Yeah. And instead it was like this big. I don't know. <laughs> it's six to eight inches tall. I'd say about that. But it's the best damn balsamic I've ever tried. <laughs> it's really good. We'll include a link in this post if you want it, but it's like syrup. Mm-hmm. So I wonder, Dane, if that would, if we could do like a, well, if we're going to do olive oil and balsamic, you know, should we put some oregano on it too? And- <laughs> I mean, why why not get some nice fresh basil? <laughs> yeah. You know? Is it a chef's a kiss? Okay, some actually, tomatoes? all of those would, would be really, really good on a raspberry sorbet. All right. I mean, just think about that. I, I think we could try that. Yeah. You know, Branch and Vine actually had already mentioned the whole balsamic on ice cream thing. Okay. Because they have all those really great vinaigrettes and stuff. So- you know, Dane's listening time. right now, and he's like, "Guys, just do the olive oil." But but Branch, no los dos. <laughs> Branch and Vine, they're the microgreens people at the farmers market. Uh huh. Um, they uh they have like you know lemon olive oil, and I did they oh, have? Oh, I love their lemon. Ol- they've got lemon and lime olive yeah. oil. Yeah, they've got all kinds of crazy ones. Fruity flavors uh-huh. and stuff. I have the lemon one. I've got the butter one too. Love it first bite has mm-hmm. sort of a I don't want to call it a bar but an olive oil and balsamic vinegar sort of corner. Mm-hmm. And you can taste each one with Bulk little tasting section, cups. you could say. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I've had that stuff and it's so good. We'll try it, Dane. No promises as to when. And then a couple of follow-ups. Geez, half our show's done already, but um, mm-hmm. a couple of follow-ups from Kevin, the most interesting man in the world, our man with the hat in Manhattan. Mm-hmm. He said, hey, we talked about what should we call people from Idaho Falls. We, I think, decided on IFers. <laughs> yeah, I like that one. He said, uh, hey, how about eight beers? So then Oh, you... eight beers. I thought you said eight beers. Like, eight beers. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I did. <laughs> like, uh... like bread in a can. <laughs> <laughs> eight beers uh-huh. can include Ammonites, Yukonians, okay, okay. <laughs> Yukonians, sorry, <laughs> Yukon, Ionians, mm-hmm. Swan Valleyans, Irwinians, <laughs> Ryer, Ryery Pucians, <laughs> Lincolnians, and the boners. Uh-huh. <laughs> I see what you did there, Kev. That's funny. <laughs> I never thought about calling people from Bone, Idaho, boners. I mean... Very creative and thank you. I can't really think of a better thing to call them either. And did Dane say Idaho fallopians? Anyway, yeah. <laughs> he also said, so we were pondering how many weeks of vacation people get off depending on the country they're in. Right. And I was talking about Japan in that they pride themselves on falling asleep at their workspace. Yeah, on their work ethic. To show how hard they're working. But he said, Mm -hmm. you know, in Japan, everyone gets a minimum of two weeks vacation, 10 days, Mm -hmm. and Saturday and Sunday off. So it's just like America. Most people in Japan that I know have 15 to 20 days off. Right. Three to four weeks. Mm -hmm. China has a really bad working setup called 996. 
that's working from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. for six days a week. <sighs> okay, well, wait. 72 hours. But then when, like, how much time do you get off in between, though? I Is mean, it just, like, the one day? One day. day. Yeah. Oh. 12 hours a day, <laughs> six days a week. That sounds horrible. Yikes. Yeah. There's no way that everyone there does that, though. I mean, probably, well, like, the very poor, like, all the people, like all the like slave know. labor children. I think there is a way that they can do that, and it's called communism. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. Yikes. I guess I just meant like it probably depends on your social class, which horrible still. I mean, I mean, I know yeah. that uh, the golden rule dictates he who yes. has the money makes the rules, but <laughs> I don't know if that's true. Yeah. Right. There. Yeah. Ugh. Yikes. So thankfully, we're not like that. Mm -hmm. Selling your home, make your move with Mike Helps Idaho. For over five years, I've been helping Idaho with real estate, buying, selling, investing. And now I'm joined by Carly Morgan to help you even more. We're honest on this show and we'll be honest with you too. And we're backed and brokered by the best. Keller Williams Realty East Idaho. And when you close, I donate $100 of my own money to a charity of your choice. So make your move with Mike Helps Idaho. Link in post. Back to school means thrifting, baby, at Elsie's Closet Upscale Resale. Trendy fashion that's budget-friendly. Elsie's Closet is Idaho Falls' only thrift store devoted exclusively to women and women's fashion. Right now they have everything for back to school. Pants, tees, sneakers, bags, jewelry. A store for women by women. Look for the pink sign just off Yellowstone on A Street. Use promo code IFAF to save 15% on your total purchase at Elsie's Closet. It's not just a stop at the thrift, it's a whole vibe. Just in at DIY wedding and events, New Floral China. It adds such a sophisticated and feminine touch to any event. Just one example of the many things you can rent when designing your event, like the Polaroid guest book, candy salad jars, even a full service drink trailer. DIY Wedding and Event Rentals has great ideas for your next wedding or event. So don't do it all on your own. Call or text 208-403-2040 today. That's 208-403-2040. Use promo code IFAF to save 15% off all your rentals. Have you experienced locally raised beef? Virgin River Land and Cattle Company sources... Okay, that's my... <laughs> Sam Elliott. <laughs> Sources local Angus fed on green Idaho pastures for a rich beef flavor. As we are heading into fall and Christmas is coming, you might be wondering about buying quantities of beef for Christmas presents or to feed your family throughout the year. Want to know what your beef options are? Find Virgin River Land and Cattle Company on Facebook. Use promo code IFAF to save 15% on locally raised beef. In celebration of their 10th anniversary, our friends at Roof Rescue are giving away four free roofs to people right here in our community. Thank you for your nominations. They are now closed, and the winners will be announced September 2nd. Ooh, Labor Day. Roof Rescue gives away free roofs every year to veterans, members of the military, first responders, teachers, or anyone that deserves it. Roof Rescue in Idaho Falls, Twin Falls, and Logan Lincoln Post. Roof Rescue, providing watertight peace of mind. Did your family or friends love their visit to Idaho Falls this summer? Of course they did. Send them the best souvenir, a unique homegrown tea from Teton T-shirts. If you've looked all over for Idaho Falls tourist tees and didn't see anything you liked, check out one more place, tetont-shirts.com. Now, don't Google it. Actually, type it into the URL window in your browser because it's a brand new store. That's tetontshirts.com, link in post, and proudly wear a real piece of Idaho Falls, as modeled often in the show. While we're still off in Plagola land, want to mention Landon's Sweet Love and Corn. <gasps> oh, I love Landon's. Start selling this week. Oh, yay! Oh my gosh, we're going to make so much elote. <laughs> yes, el elote loco. Uh-huh. That's Some mesquites. The, uh huh. Yeah. I can't wait. And I love to put four ears in the air fryer. I've got it all down. You keep the husks on. Oh, yeah. And then you turn them. Oh, man. I've, I've got to check my notes. Somewhere I wrote down exactly how to do it. We'll release the recipe when, when we've had it. We it's can re verify it. <laughs> it's a really good product. $6 <laughs> for 13 ears of That's Baker's pretty dang Dozen. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Might even get a couple. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You better. Yeah. Sometimes they do have <laughs> earwigs, though. Well, I mean, that's why they're called earwigs. <laughs> yeah. So that's fine. And oh, is that why? Oh, yeah. Ears you... of corn? 
Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, no. Oh. That's genuinely like, okay, the whole thing about them crawling into your ears, that's a myth. Oh. Yeah, no. People okay. heard them being called earwigs and assumed that it's because they crawled into your ears and laid eggs and stuff. No. I've been I getting mean, Landon's for like five years or more, <laughs> and I think that only happened once, by the way. I just want to say that. That's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, well, and realistically, considering that that's literally the bug's namesake, I think that's, you know, kind of expected. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. I think that a lot of people sort of heard it being called an earwig and assumed that's what it did. But to be fair, all bugs crawl into ears sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. I mean, they look for warm, moist holes. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, it bugs aren't super discriminatory on that. <laughs> but yeah, no, earwigs just happen to really like hanging out in corn. And while we're in corn land. <laughs> yeah. You know, they really should have called them corn wigs or something yeah, like that. Right. Yeah. That wouldn't have been so horrible. It's that weird pincher thing that freaks me out the most though uh -huh. yeah. Ugh. same 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 gross do they only have one or two no they yeah it's just at the front of their mouth right no they've got the weird one on their ass oh yeah that right thing. yeah okay yeah what the hell is it's up head with that? it's ass what's the difference <laughs> i know right <laughs> we mentioned sunflower days last episode and didn't realize oh yeah we're in the thick of it right now i know i'm so excited i love sunflower days they're so aesthetic <laughs> wild adventure corn maze that's the um Ex is it exit 164? I'm not good at exits. I go by landmarks. <laughs> anyway, you can find them on Facebook or just Google it yourself, but it's right there going on through August 31st, Monday through Thursday, 5 to 9, Friday and Saturday, noon to 9. And of course, we recommend getting those picks during golden hour. Oh, yeah. The hour just after sunset, as modeled by the lovely <laughs> and talented Carly Morgan right here. You're very kind. Thank you. That was a great day, though, wasn't it? Look at that field of sunflowers. Just beautiful. Well, and I think we even went like near the end when it was not as good as it could have been. Yeah. Yeah. This year, we're going to go like right in the middle and it's perfect. They've, they've got some impressive acreage there. It's just, it's a sight to see. And of mm -hmm. course, very Instagrammable, I think, as we said last episode. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's nine acres of sunflowers. Idaho Falls Farmers Market is introducing their winter market. Oh, I'm so excited for that too. And they're amping it up. So they, I, it looked like they sort of were testing the waters last uh -huh. winter. Right, right. But they're going to do it once a month. Here's the dates. Yeah. I did say the, so the one I went to last winter while very nice, was just very crowded. Yes. So I'm really glad that they're doing this new schedule because I think that's going to help a lot. And that was at the deck. They're going to move them to the Shiloh Inn. Oh, wow. It's the Snake River Event Center. Uh-huh. Saturdays 10 to 3 when they do do it. Uh, we just put up mm -hmm. the exact dates in our video. Oh, that's going to be so nice, especially because I know yeah. that's a bigger venue. Yes, it is. So that's going to be way better because we were a little nuts to butts last time. <laughs> All right, let's talk about how to spot a fake post before you share it on Facebook. Oh, okay. Last week, I saw the same post of a missing gal shared by a bunch of credible, caring people. Mm -hmm. And I know when you see a post like that, the first thing you want to do is... Yeah, you want to blast spread it. Spread the word. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And so I get that. But I went and checked, like, you know how when somebody shares a post... You see their name, and then you see the name of the person who originally posted it. Right. You can go there and kind of check them out. And I was like, this doesn't really look super credible. Hmm. And a few days went by, and then I saw this post. Let's put it up. How to spot a fake post before you share. Oh, okay. Interesting. So let's. Uh, can we just run down the list? Yeah, we can. I guess the one thing I'm wondering is like, why would they make a fake post about a missing person? Are you gonna? Is that kind of part of this for point whoring? Oh, for fake internet points. That's so dumb. Sometimes so that they can turn around then and sell their account. Oh, that sucks. And I'm sure that there's some just general trolls. Yeah. But it's my understanding that's why. Okay. Okay. So, and this is just sad, right? I don't know how to feel about this because the very first one is, is it reporting a missing child, found pet, or found an elderly person? Now, what if that really happens? Right. But I see, but that's, we're getting a whole bunch of boys who cried wolf. Yeah, that's right. And so mm -hmm. it's diluting, you know, the actual cases that come along. Right, the folks that really need it. Uh, did it originate from an events page, marketplace, or unknown agency? Like a, I don't know, like oh. a Facebook business page? Oh, interesting. A okay. memes page? Is there missing huh. contact information? That's something oh. you can take a look at right away. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, 
if found, contact the Bonneville County Police Department right, at right. this number. Which would make perfect sense. Right. Are the comments turned off? Aha. Oh, well, that's, I mean, yeah. That's one I look for a now, lot. That one I see a lot on like uh, fake apartment postings. Uh huh. You know, people are like, oh, great, four bedroom apartment for 500 bucks a month, whatever lies yeah you know and then if i also see that there are no comments i'm like yeah it's because it's a scam mm -hmm. yeah yeah they'll ask for a deposit and mm -hmm. then block you and you'll never hear from them again so dumb does it have a hashtag with the name of city or state i don't know what that would have to do with it yeah that seems weird does it say please share please bump this post hmm. does it say flood our feeds to help find the family if you answered yes to these it's fake don't share. Be careful. Don't fall for these lies. And and the thing hmm. is, I, I usually, I got to tell you, I'm a little judgy when I uh -huh. see somebody who I previously thought was smart share something like this. Right, right. I almost got scammed this week. Really? I got a, a, a email. It was a phishing email. Mm -hmm. And um, it looked like it was from Meta. Uh -huh. From Facebook. And we sometimes run ads. We'll, we'll boost a post or something. Right. Uh, you know, just for fun, just to get our name out there to more people. And uh, it said something like, hey, you can no longer run boosted posts on Facebook. I'm like, well, that doesn't make any sense. So that was my first clue. Mm -hmm. But so I came to my desktop mm -hmm. instead of um, clicking or holding down the link on the iPhone. So it pops up and you can actually see where the link actually goes to. Oh, right. It was an HTML email. So it said facebook.com slash support or whatever. Uh-huh. But when I hovered the mouse over it, it was a completely different site. And you can do that with HTML emails. Right. So I guess what I'm saying oh, is- spooky. They're all out to get us. Be careful. <laughs> Man, that could, just sucks so much too. Right? Because it's, I mean, they're getting better and better. They really are. Yeah. The Olympics already over. It seemed like they came and went so quickly. I know. Everybody that, makes money. feels, though. <laughs> except for the athletes, yeah. Yeah, right? <laughs> I realized, and I maybe I've done this before, but I realized this time around, I consumed them differently. Mm. And, and what I mean by that is, I didn't watch any of it. Yeah, no, no same. We admitted that last episode. No opening ceremonies, no nothing. But what I did was watch my meme pages. Mm -hmm. Okay, Snoop Dogg is narrating some stuff. <laughs> um, Usain Bolt is uh, 10th as opposed to 1st, which he was in 2008. Mm -hmm. And only off by, what, a 10th of a second or something? Wild. In fact, you shared something this week on your radio station page. I did, yeah. After 100 years of innovation, from the Olympics in 1924 to the Olympics in 2024, mm -hmm. the men's 100-meter relay... The uh, difference in a hundred years, and this is with uh, better shoes, better mm -hmm. track, better starter better blocks. blocks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 0.8 seconds. Wild to yeah. me, by the way. <laughs> now, here's something else. I was hearing about how in this specific Olympics, there was, so they've added these like speakers to the back of the blocks. Oh. So that everyone gets the sound of the, of the starting shot at the same time. Really? And the winner of one of the races, I don't remember which, because again, we didn't watch it. We just <laughs> yeah. saw the memes. Uh, but the winner apparently won by like point something seconds, but he was also the furthest away from where the gun was shot. So it would have taken the sound longer to travel to him than the difference in how he won the race. Oh, wow. So if he would have gone when he heard the sound, he would have lost. Right. But because he went when he heard it because of the speaker... He won. It's kind of funny to me that we're down to milliseconds now. Insane, isn't That's it? The, it is insane. Yeah. It's insane bolt. <laughs> but I the point I was making is um, I, would, I waited for the memes, and now I'm going back and watching all the highlights. Right, yeah. The, the, you know, the, the meme-worthy parts that people are talking about. Well, and I will say, I think one very particular thing got memed more than anything else. Yeah, are you thinking what I'm thinking? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the poor French pole vaulter. Oh no, that's not who I was thinking. Okay, you okay, you go first. What are you thinking? <laughs> well, I was thinking of Ray Gun. Oh yeah. The Australian breakdancer. Yes. Uh also I saw <laughs> the most hilarious product, and I don't know how they got it out so fast. I don't know if it's a product product per se. Yeah. But you know how some cars have that back windshield wiper? Yes. And like some people will decorate it. Like I've seen yes. one where it's like a basketball hoop in the arm <laughs> slamming a basketball and uh -huh. stuff. Uh 
they made one of her where her legs are the part that moves <laughs> and then she's like laying there. It's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was um it was pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Up your game, Australia. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm sure she's a fine person. I thought it was just plain embarrassing. But we're, I mean, yeah. we are USA, right? Didn't we invent breakdancing? I'm pretty sure. On, yeah. on cardboard boxes in the Bronx in, or Brooklyn in New York, I, I think. I mean, that sounds right to me. Okay, I was thinking of the French pole vaulter. Mm. Oh, I was thinking about him before, too. Wee wee, madame. Package delivery. <laughs> um <laughs> hear me out though it, this is the very definition of mixed emotions <laughs> hey buddy the bad news is you can't go to the next round you're not going to win a medal <laughs> the good news is is everybody is watching your package bounce over that pole vaulting bar in slow-mo and getting thirsty oh my goodness <laughs> You know, it's so funny. The good news is your package is now world famous. In fact, I think he's been offered money by some site. <laughs> you know, for like a little or like a condom company or something. For a little guest appearance. <laughs> yeah. Well, and of course he's French. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we good we for him. <laughs> but or did you already make that joke? A little bit. Okay. But yours is better. Yours is better. <laughs> anyway, um, his wee wee knocked the bar off. Poor the, guy. Uh, or the, is he a poor guy? He's, Probably. I, I mean, think he's blessed. He's rich in other ways. <laughs> <laughs> he might not have the gold, but he's still doing just <laughs> <Yeah>. fine. <laughs> hon, hon, yeah. hon, fromage baguette. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, but there was... A, okay, the other athlete, though, that was really big was that um, Turkish shooter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's like 50 plus, right? Yeah. 52, I thought I yeah, heard. Yeah, I think he's 52. Yeah. I saw a really sweet picture of him and his cat. Yeah. Honestly, it's so funny because he goes out there and he's like so cash about it. And everyone's making jokes about how he's a secret hitman, da, da, da. But then I see that picture of him and his cat and it's like, oh, no, he's a cinnamon roll. <laughs> I wonder. Which is a term we just recently learned on this show. <laughs> I kind of wonder if the reason... He is like so chill and so good at what he does is because he's like always playing with a laser pointer with his cat. Uh, could be. And like maybe he's just gotten his aim so precise <laughs> that like he doesn't like, I mean, all the other guys were wearing these like crazy goggles that have like all kinds of lines to help you shoot and stuff. Uh -huh. But like he doesn't need to do that anymore because he's always, like he's probably just always got his laser pointer out and he knows exactly just that the movements of his hand that'll lead the laser to where it needs to go. Yeah. He had that just dead on <laughs> confidence, didn't he? Yeah, dude. And the hand Very in the impressive. pocket. Yeah. Like he was just cash, yep. dude. That was just a... a Monday afternoon, no big yeah. deal, you know? Like, he might as well have been standing in line at the bank. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully not in that position. Well, maybe not with a gun. Put but... the money in the bag. <laughs> yeah, right. Ooh, whoops. Man, I, I almost said Stick in a... Stick him up. <laughs> I even almost said in a coffee shop, but that's also, like, yeah. But you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but in a bank is definitely a little worse. Right. <laughs> You know, I really like how memed this Olympics was. Yes. Because I don't feel like we've ever had that before. Right. Well, and m memes are definitely more prominent, prevalent now than well, any yeah, other time but in like, history. Four years ago, they were pro I mean, they were about the same. Yeah. I wonder if this Olympics has just been a little bit more outrageous. Memes were, at the <laughs> beginning, memes were for people that, you know, visited ICANHasCheeseburger.com. Right. <laughs> and now grandma knows what memes are. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I saw, I, completely unrelated, but somebody posted a picture of their grandma's house where she posted a meme on her doorway. <laughs> Two frames, one frame, skinny people, stick people walking into, you when you're walking into grandma's house. <laughs> Second frame, you when you're walking out of grandma's house, to fat stick figures. <laughs> and she had printed it framed it <laughs> put it up in her house that's all i'm saying that is so funny though i love that <laughs> memes are all around us uh speaking of uh, this isn't really a meme but um check out this do you want to introduce this one the swoob life hack <laughs> okay so here's the thing first off genius okay and here it is let's play it for you <laughs> yeah i'll just narrate 
Uh, she's putting what, maxi so pads. So those are actually panty liners, okay. technically. Panty liners in the. I really should let you handle this. You <laughs> handle all of this. Okay, so basically, this chick is putting <laughs> panty liners on the underwires of her bra. Okay. Okay. Now, here's the thing: if you did maxi pads, that would be way too much because those are much thicker. That'd be like adding those little uh, chicken cutlets to your bra. Okay. You know, like you could probably get a really nice push-up effect if you did maxi okay. pads, though. <laughs> Which would be kind of nice. Uh-huh. Dual purpose, you know? <laughs> I, I am ashamed to admit I wouldn't know the difference between the two. Yeah. Basically, it's just how thick it is. Okay. You know, maxi pads are more like a diaper. Mm-hmm. Panty liners are more like that little pad of cotton and a Band-Aid. Okay. Yeah. And when you put them on the under on the inside under wire, wire of part, the, mm-hmm. it uh, protects against swoob. Swoob. Now, if you don't know what swoob is... That's boob sweat. Yeah. We talked about this last year about this time, mm-hmm. I believe. Yeah. We talked about yeah. swoob and swass and... Yes. <laughs> and swack. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All the other good stuff. Uh-huh. Uh, but here's the thing. As a heavy-chested lady, I have to deal with a lot of heavy ch- heavy-chested lady problems. Mm-hmm. Swoob being one of them. And it is the worst. Now, thankfully... It's that time of year again. <laughs> yeah, right? Now, thankfully, I don't... I've never had it like seep through my shirt Mm -hmm. but it can totally happen and that's terrible now what i like about this hack is that it can actually do a couple of different things for you so you've never experienced this particular this particular type of torture but um sometimes underwire bras which by the way they're bras with a metal like a little metal um uh what's a good word a little metal crescent basically a little metal crescent that just goes right under your boobie now can you imagine wearing a piece of metal strapped to your chest all day? It's not comfy. Yeah, that doesn't sound fun, no. Especially with extra weight just weighing down and shoving it into your rib cage. It sucks. I have heard complaints from the ladies before about underwires. Yes. Now, on top of that, though, sometimes the seams will start to come a little loose, and those underwires will start to pop out of the bra and stab you in the tit. That's the complaint <laughs> I've heard, yeah. It is the worst. <laughs> Would this help with that? This might help with that a little bit. Yes, that's that's yeah. what I was getting to. So if you are dealing with that problem and you have a panty liner, you've got a solution, All right. at least. <laughs> um, now, here's something funny. Back when I used to do a little bit of modeling, we actually had this one day when we were doing this really badass steampunk shoot in the middle of summer in the hottest weather. And of like You know steampunk style. Like, it's it's... Usually several layers. It's not cool. Yeah, I mean, it looks cool, like but that. it's it's very warm. Yeah. And we were going to be out there for like 10 hours that day. Something insane. And so they actually had us put panty, li- panty liners in the armpits of our clothes so that we could pose without big old sweat stains that people would have to Photoshop out later. I'm wondering if dudes need this hack too. Uh, yeah, they yeah. definitely do. I know a couple of sweaty teddies. They need it. You know? This could be a good swack hack. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> but yeah, the thing is, I feel like panty liners are so underrated and they're so useful. You've opened my eyes to a whole new world. <laughs> yeah. You know what? This might actually be the very first time when a man has to walk into the store, buy a thing of panty liners, and lie when he's saying, these aren't for me, they're for my girlfriend. Right. Which, first of all, dude, no one thinks they're for you. Right. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've, yeah, I've never had a pro. I've had to buy a few things from time to time and never had a problem with that. Right. Well, because why would you? Yeah. Because that would be dumb. That's like being embarrassed for buying toilet paper. I did have to make a call once and say, now, do you want the lemon or the lime? <laughs> Two well, every, everyone knows that the lemon's better. <laughs> <laughs> I do now. Yeah, right. <laughs> did you hear we've got a new, exciting global health emergency, according to the WHO? I can't do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the World I'm Health so Organization. Done. We're all so tired of it. I wonder... If it's going to spread as much as it did uh, with the Rona, with the co- cor- Corvid-19. Corvid, that's a good one. got to be careful not to use those words mm-hmm. so we don't the, get nerfed. The big old panini that happened. <laughs> yeah. Pandini. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the pandas. Pandoramic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Panovision. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, here's the thing, though, man. Like, the last one just sucked so bad. He, okay, and that's not... Okay, Aren't the one we, part well, that was we nice was the still... two weeks off. <laughs> yeah, right. 
And then after that, it was just horrible. Yeah, I feel like we're still feeling the effects from the last one. (sighs) You got one more in you? No. Can you do one more, kids? (laughs) Look. (laughs) (laughs) Well, the kids can. Or they could with the last one. (laughs) <laughs> I've, I said it before and I'll say it again. All right. I can only, I can only withstand so much before I just lay down and die. Okay. If it's a zombie apocalypse, I know I'm out. This one, it's got me teetering. Anyway, what's, a, what's exciting <laughs> it's about it is it's been <laughs> rebranded from monkey pox to M pox. You know, I, I bet the reason for that is because there are people who are so stupid that they thought, oh, well, so long as I'm not around any monkeys, I'll be fine. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. So they were trying to just make it more broad so that they'd have to actually listen to the information. I think if it has the name <laughs> Pox in it, you better watch out. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I wonder if the old curse, a Pox be upon ye, mm-hmm. will come back. You know how like back in ye old times, the milkmaids who had had cow pox didn't get small pox, which ravaged everyone else i don't know i don't know that that's interesting oh yeah like basically everyone who was getting smallpox and was getting like deformed from it because you'd get all these um craters from the lesions that that it would leave um they were all jealous of these beautiful milkmaids with their perfect skin and so that's the thing i'm noticing that there's this one that's named after an animal that's not so bad and then there's one that's not, that's worse. So, like, what if the monkey pox is the lesser of something else coming down the line? Right. Like, that's horrifying. God forbid. <laughs> Does that also mean we need to start drinking monkey milk? Because if we do, I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah. going to lose it, dude. I've already tried almond milk and oat milk. How bad can monkey milk be? <laughs> I mean, I do like dairy, but that just seems weird, man. <laughs> you know, it seems too close. You know? <laughs> too close to people milk. And finally tonight, we have some exciting new Mormon sex slang. Now, wh- Mike, Always why? one of my favorites. Why do you got to bring religion into it? You know damn well why. You know damn well, we've and we've discussed them on the show before, the rumors that surround BYU and BYUI <laughs> co-eds. Right. Well, and not only that, but we're, we're only using it to describe what subculture these terms happen to be big in. Exactly. You know? And I defended... The LDS religion and the churchgoers and the fine co-eds at Mm -hmm. church campuses, uh, because I don't believe these are true. It's sort of like those, I don't know, Devil's Dictionary, Cleveland Steamer, Rusty Fishhook definitions that are funny to, you know, 15-year-old boys. Right, right. But I don't think actually happen. Mm -hmm. Just to recap what we said last time. (laughs) So let's get to it. Exciting new Mormon sex slang. There's a dude going around interviewing co-eds. And here's the first clip. What's the craziest thing that's happened to you at BYUI? Someone asked me to shake the bed for soaking once. And what'd you say? Gotta help your friends out sometimes. So the interviewer is obviously, he's wearing a BYU-Idaho hoodie, I believe. And he's going around what appears to be campus. Mm -hmm. But do you buy that that's the BYU-Idaho campus? Because I do not. I don't, know. Okay, there, even if it were... There is no way in that outfit she's a co-ed. Exactly. Especially not one on campus. Right. So, <laughs> and, and we're going to play a few more of these because I think they're obviously staged. Well, and also I'm pretty sure that if she were caught in that outfit, even outside of campus, that uh, violates their um, their moral code. Okay. And so she'd probably get in trouble at school. So um, she says that she shakes the bed while her friends are soaking <laughs> or something <laughs> And and uh, she's, she's offering the assist. <laughs> she, yeah, she says you got to help your out, your friends out sometime. Here's the next clip. What do you think about soaking? I personally think it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Do you think a better descriptor is the Provo push or the Provo pump? The Provo shake it takes place in a library, and um, they call that the uh, Provo shake, I guess. Yeah, uh, not the Harlem shake. Right, very different. <laughs> it, the Provo shake is just. <laughs> There's no beat that drops during the Provo shake. Yeah. I don't think. Yeah, they just hold still. <laughs> Next clip. Let everyone else do everything. <laughs> What's your craziest experience with Mutual? So I went on a Mutual date one time. A month later, he was engaged. He was more wanting to just derf, but I was down for derfing. So apparently she's DTD, <laughs> down to derf, is the word that she used there. Uh, Yeah, no idea what that is. Okay, it's it's dry humping with clothes on. Oh, it's what it's what 
I mean, teens have been doing just dry humping. Yeah, but it's got a new word now okay, because everything right. does because skibbity toilet. Right, and, right. Uh, and Riz. Riz. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, gen alphas. <laughs> okay, so what do we have so far? We've got Durf, we've got the Provo Shake. Uh, but, and, and then just check out this last video because this is, I believe, sort of evidence that um, they're all completely staged. Everybody's in on the joke and they're just having some fun. Have you ever watched a radar movie? No. No. Why not? I couldn't go to heaven if I did. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> well, and when I first watched that clip, I thought for sure that that guy's ears were pierced. Uh -huh. They weren't, which ruined my entire point, but that's fine. But he looks like he would, you know, like his style. <laughs> well, and go back and re rewind the show a little bit if you want to, if you're watching on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And um, you, the guy on the left has got his eyes like yeah. insanely crossed. Yeah. He's just like actively looking like a derp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So... You crazy kids, and you're soaking and shaking and jump pumping and derfing. <laughs> Good grief. Having a lot of fun on the internet, are we? Just Yikes. <laughs> be careful, because soaking leads to derfing, leads to going down to Yellowstone. So just <laughs> be careful with all that as a public service announcement. Well, that's our show. I want to leave you with this footy that I took of the new Idaho Falls Water Tower construction. It's not finished yet. I should have, that was a bad way to phrase it. Right. But um, I had a sort of magical moment last week with a buddy of mine. It was his birthday. Mm -hmm. And we hopped around a little bit, you know. Yeah. Right down there. Yeah, you guys had a little boy's day. It Hel was cute. Yeah, we not Jalisco's, but uh, Pachanga's. Uh-huh. And then uh, I think uh, the Celt and the Pie Hole was in there somewhere. <laughs> we ended up at Heads and Tails Distillery, which is right next to the Celt. Mm-hmm. And it, it's got a nice little balcony. Oh, I love their upper area. It's super pretty. Yeah, their upper deck, um, mm -hmm. you, it was, which was, by the way, the best place to be on St. Patty's Day, we discovered. Oh, right. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be surprised if they start selling reservations for that. Yeah, I kind of feel like they ought to. Because that's a, it's some very limited real estate. Mm -hmm. It's like three tables, maybe yeah, four. Yeah, not very many. Yeah. Anyway, let's start with uh, their famous bar sign. Now you can mm -hmm. see the new water tower under construction. The old ferals, right? There's Broadway and Park. Let's take a look down Park. There's the pie hole and the old I-O-O-F. Remember, that's the new snake bite. Mm -hmm. The international, right, or internal order of odd fellow. I, I'm not sure what the <laughs> I is for. Anyway, really cool footage. And then here's here we are going back. Just kind of a cool view of downtown and what we're becoming. I like it a lot. Oh, yeah. There's lots of development. It's always fun. Have a great week. See you next time. In the meantime, do the best you can with what you have, where you are, and stay fresh, cheese bags. And subscribe on YouTube, please. <laughs>